Today, we're finishing the mechanical and the electrical in the shop, and tonight's my last night. This electric duct heater today and after installing this we're pretty much done the shop and if you see my soundproofing video you'll know that the space is pretty much airtight so we need to get some air movement in here because for the last three months it smelled like rubber and fresh paint but first we need to go back in time start from the beginning Third time's the charm. We just lifted it, mounted it up there. Didn't like it, no headroom. Relocated it, love this location. Thought we were super smart and forgot about the drain. So no real route for the drain. Gonna give it another go here. Found a better spot. You can tell this is our first time. So uh, hopefully this one works out. spot got the drain coming off the bottom we we'll drop right here but uh, that's pretty much it for the whole night <laughs> Okay, Nathan left a few hours ago. We got a good start on the electrical. I have my inspection later this week, so I'm gonna hammer at it for a few more nights here. Pretty much all the electrical done in the kids' toy room, and I gotta start on the shop. So I'll give you a little update. You can see uh, all the boxes are roughed in and ready for inspection. And then the workshop, gonna tie it to the stud. And then once drywall's on, we'll pull it through and we'll be surface mounting a box. So Lumex will come and enter the rear of the box, which is gonna be fixed to the drywall. We've got a couple more hours and then it's time to go to bed. So I'm gonna try and get these lines down and I got my plumbing rough and inspection pretty soon. So I'd like to get that taken care of. <laughs> got my backing. It should fit uh, in between the high track and steel studs. So let's put it up. Expander PEX tool. I think it's called Wurzbo. Here's the pipe. This is a half inch pipe. And these are the little collars. Keep in mind, I've never used these before. It's my first time, but I believe it's pretty simple. So that is gonna get stretched out. And it's this collar that shrinks and keeps it really tight. Here's what the fittings look like. The inner diameter of the pipe is the same diameter of the fitting. So we use our cool little Wurzbo tool. It's got these different heads on it. You can see that's the tool there itself. So what happens, it just goes out. It's that motion that opens and closes these little teeth and these ridges here. I think just give it some grip so when you push it in, it bites the pipe. So you got half inch, three quarter, and it looks like one inch. I got half inch, pop this guy back on. There it is, you see how it works? Once again, pop that guy on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's where it's cool. Yeah. That's it. Look at that. Okay, there we are. What do you think? I like it. Hopefully uh, none of you rip it apart, but we'll see. If it holds. Moment of truth. Guess I leave the water on tonight. It's gonna be so scary. That's it for now. Tomorrow, I'll come back, finish electrical. Then we're pretty much done. Oh, and I gotta do lights in here. Frick, I have a lot to do.
this circuit is currently running all the way around this little U bend. And the idea is most of my power tools or at least larger power tools will be on this wall here. Just recently got a four horsepower, 16 inch jointer planer combo. That guy's gonna live right here in the middle, most likely, but you'll see that each one of these, a 240 volt, and a 120 volt circuit for the length of run here. This is good for 20 amp circuit, 12 two, meaning 12 gauge, two conductor. So I'll have two receptacles right there. Another two, another two, skip that guy. Another two there. And then I've got the one back here, which is gonna be for the table saw, which is gonna live right here. And most likely the band saw, maybe drill press. This little guy here is a dedicated feed. 40 volt 20 amps for the dust collector which is going to live tucked away in the corner back here Welcome back. We're ready for paint here. I think I'd like to get these electrical boxes put on the wall though, just before you paint. What I'm doing here, it's a bit odd. You don't typically do your electrical like this. However, the inspector's fine with it and it's allowing us to keep our decoupling. So these wires actually aren't fastened to the beadboard or the drywall at all. You'll remember they're fastened behind to the stud. The idea is we're gonna take these outdoor boxes, enter through the rear. We'll use a Lumix cable connector. I'll fill the hole with acoustic seal and then this guy will stick into the hole. The only issue is these are a bit too large to fit into the holes. I should have made them larger. So I'm having to take my multi-tool and create a bit of a bigger opening, which is a little scary because my blade's getting close to these wires, but I'm just being very careful and cautious not to nick them at all. So let's give it a shot. So I really didn't plan on doing that. And that's probably the most time consuming piece of the whole thing. So it's a bit, a bit frustrating. But now I just like to clean these up, get them the exact same length, strip them. electricians out there watching this, what do you have to say? Doing an okay job, bad job? Should I have used pigtails? Are you gonna be hating on me? And so that's how I've been doing pretty much all these receptacles. Pretty happy with it. Sure glad I put a light under the bulkhead. I think it would've been really dark here. Kind of shifted it over this way. Figured this is kind of dead space anyway, so it does get a bit dark over here, but I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Is it nice and bright in here?
scan through the miracle of the time. We're piped in and we've got some air moving. Check it out. Yes. Can you hear that? We got air in and we got air out. We are so close to being done. Let me show you how this works. So this guy here is taking care of pushing air in and out of the space. However, if we were just taking nice warm air from inside the shop and dumping it outside in the middle of winter, this wouldn't be that efficient. So this guy here is called an HRV, a heat recovery ventilator. And what it's doing is recovering the heat from inside the shop. Give me one minute, I'll show you how this HRV works. So first, we've got two blowers, one for the supply air, one for the exhaust air. And second, we've got the core of the HRV, this guy here, that's a heat exchanger. It lets air crisscross without touching each other. The air goes through these pleats, they don't mix, but they rub shoulders and transfer energy. So we have fresh outdoor air here entering the HRV. It's drawn through this filter, through the heat exchanger by this blower down here, and then it's pushed up into this pipe here. This pipe goes and it enters into the shop. Meanwhile, we've got the exhaust from the shop entering here. This blower then draws the air through the heat exchanger up through this pipe and blown outside. However, these guys aren't 100% efficient, so we're not able to recover all the heat that's being thrown outside. So the air that goes into the shop isn't gonna be exactly the temperature that we want. So that's why I'm passing the fresh air entering the shop through this electric duct heater. Now, one other tidbit of information, these HRVs, you can actually air balance. The blowers have tiny ECM motors that allows you to select their speed so you can get your desired air volume. Now, I don't want this space positively pressurized, meaning that more air trying to enter the shop than leave the shop. Otherwise, fumes from finish or fine particles of dust are gonna want to leave and escape the second the door is open. Rather, I would try and create this space negatively pressurized so when the door is open, the nice filtered air from in the home comes into the shop to be exhausted. So the plan is to create a slightly negative space inside the shop here. And the way that I'll do that is with these instruments I grab from work. So I've got a manometer here, which will allow me to connect to the HRV, read pressures and balance. And then I've got an anometer here, which will allow me to take readings and determine the volume of air coming into the space and leaving. So I didn't quite finish last night. Ran into a bit of an issue. I originally picked up this thermostat. It's a line thermostat, meaning that the actual line voltage passes right through the thermostat. And foolishly, I just ran 18 gauge low voltage wiring. So I could either mount this guy up here in a box or I found this really fancy wireless line voltage thermostat. So there's a little relay that I've mounted inside the box here. This antenna plugged into the relay and the antenna communicates the thermostat. And it's programmable so I can mount it in the shop and I don't need to come up here to change the temperature. Let's see if this thing works. See that? Heat's on. Looks like we're getting something here on the heating element. There's the relay I just purchased, with the wireless antenna. Put the cover on and we'll be done. I've got myself a shop and it is more or less complete. Thanks for joining this episode. See you in the next one. <laughs>